Welcome to Major Keys. If you've watched any of my interviews, you know that this is not my typical format, but quarantine has had me thinking, which I'm sure is not uncommon to you either, because you've had a lot of time to think. In the midst of my quarantine routine, which is going to work, going to run at the park, and laying on my couch watching TV, I mean a lot of TV, I've watched On My Block, All American, Queen Sugar, Queen of the South, Queer Eye, Extraction, A Different World, Hamilton, Outer Banks, Money Heist, Hollywood. I've watched it all. I've watched a lot of TV. And sometimes you just need to do that. That is how I decompress. And in this world of madness, being a black woman, I deserve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I deserve it. I'm sure you have learned a lot of things about yourself in quarantine. And as I started to reflect, I thought this is something that I wanted to do and I wanted to switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna give you a major key right off the top. Life is way too short. If you wanna do it, do it. The time is never gonna be right. There's no better time than the present. Do it now. I mean, frankly, who knows how long we're gonna be in quarantine, especially if y'all don't wear your masks. Y'all know who I'm talking about. George is who I'm talking about. I'm incredibly annoyed <laughs> with Georgia. So the new format will be interviews. It'll be a little more cultural references, lifestyle references, but still keeping the essence of what I want to do, which is to shed light on women in sports as well as women's sport. But before we do all of that, I wanna bring you a segment I like to call For the Culture. And typically I'll be covering a minority business, shedding light on what they have going on. But today I wanted to make sure that everyone is registered to vote. Not only that, but that you make sure that everyone in your family and in your circle is registered to vote. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to open your favorite browser and type in vote.gov. Simple, huh? Then you're gonna select your state or territory, mine being Georgia, find out how to register, and then I'm gonna start the online registration. Obviously you can do the mail-in version as well. So here in Georgia, they're giving you the option to register online using your driver's license or your ID. And then I'm gonna click all that apply, and these are the minimum requirements for me to vote. Then I'm gonna begin my voter registration. Once I've answered all the questions appropriately, then I will have become a registered voter and I can do my best to help get corrupt leaders out of office. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. So first off, make sure that you're registered to vote. And when you're done with that, make sure the people around you are registered to vote because I went to a family gathering and realized I have far too many cousins who don't vote and who are not registered to vote and maybe they don't know how so i put this together to show you how to help someone else register to vote and make sure that you're registered to vote as well it's so simple vote.gov all right to the part that you are familiar with i'm checking in with my girl zora stevenson this week i'm so excited to have her she is one of the hardest workers in the business and i can't wait for y'all to learn more about her Welcome Zora Stevenson, the sideline digital reporter for the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm so excited to have you. Uh, one of my rising media star sisters, um, as well as my guinea pig kind of for this new format. If a rising media star sister calls, we all answer. So let's do this. Yes, love it, love it. All right, so you have 60 seconds. I need you to tell me your sports journey in 60 seconds, all right? I know it's gonna be tough. You've had an illustrious career, but I need to know how you found sport and how we get to today. Okay, so growing up, ball was life, played basketball all through my youth, got to Elon University, got a full ride to play four years there. I said, hey, after basketball, I wanna keep doing basketball, even if it doesn't mean being a player wanted to be a sports broadcaster, and my journey took me to news first. And I had two separate news jobs, one in Greenville, North Carolina, another in Denver, Colorado. And then on the side, I was doing as much sports as possible, whether it was sideline reporting, color commentary, and I'm big on affirmations. And I affirmed it that it would all work out and um, wouldn't trade my journey for anything. I love, love news, and it taught me so much. But uh, got an opportunity to work with the Bucks. They said, hey, we're going to give you a shot. And I said, I'm in, and now I'm here. That was good. That was under 60 seconds. So that, that was awesome. Um, all right. So what did sports teach you um, as, a, as a young girl in sports? Like what all has that brought to your life? Everything. 
it's taught me how to work hard. It's taught me how to persevere. It's taught me how to fail and how to get multiple no's and still keep on trying, miss a bunch of shots, but you still take them. It's taught me how to work with different types of people, how to be a team player, how to be involved in something that's bigger than yourself and uh, communication skills. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love this game. Now you're with the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, you've had an interesting year to say the least with the number one team in the league. And then COVID-19 hits, what in the world? Um, how, has, how has that been? I mean, talk a little bit about, yes, the, the, the awesome, I guess, in-person part that you've had, but also talk about kind of what this abrupt uh, change has been. You know, it, it's been crazy because it's been like um, peaks and valleys to this entire hiatus and break experience. And I think everybody, no matter what you do in life, could probably attest to that with everything that's going on with COVID-19 in addition to all the injustices that are happening in our country. And for me, just like imagine being on this amazing roller coaster ride and it continues to kind of go up and up and up. And I was traveling to all these different cities. I go to every single game, whether it's home or away. The team went to Paris. I got the opportunity to do that. And wow. my husband came, so we had like a mini vacation combined with work. So just all these amazing experiences and telling the stories of the best athletes in the world, which is such an amazing experience and really put my storytelling skills to the test. And I've loved every minute of it, whether it was like the walk-offs or the features or just the interactions and even outside of work, just getting to know these people as people because that's what they are. And uh, you're like in the busiest time of your life, you move to this new city, but you're barely even there. And then all of a sudden it stops. Like th these past four months, is the most time that I've spent in Milwaukee since I moved here. And um, it was like at the beginning, it was anxiousness and uncertainty because it was like, wait, we've been traveling everywhere. So you just, you almost want to assess your own health and make sure that you're okay and your loved ones are okay. And then you kind of are okay with the break for a little bit because you've been going so fast and doing everything. And so you're like recharging yourself. And then hits the point of like, wait, this is going to be for a long time. How do I navigate this and continue to do my job to the best of my ability? And so you kind of get into a groove with that. And we did a bunch of Instagram lives and we um, have done a lot of internal town halls and hosting different events. And then even the team like was active in protests and marches and the organization led that. So we've been covering that. And then personally, like you want to take this time to self reflect and see how you can get better. But then it's tough because in the midst of it, like you're worried about your family and your friends and you know, life is still happening. Like life and death is still happening with all of this going on. And it's like, you're having to experience that remotely. All of the trials and tribulations of life, but you're coping with all of it remotely, right? You can't go hug that family member or friend that you know so desperately needs a hug. And um, so it's been a lot of, you know, kind of just ups and downs, peaks and valleys and, um, we're all on this ride, right? And uh, I'm just, I'm excited though that it seemed, obviously we are not near the end of COVID-19, but no. in terms of a break from live sports, live sports are coming back. And that is something that I know a lot of people are excited about. Live sports are back. Uh, the team is now in the bubble or what are they calling it? Team campus? Or yes, campus? the campus. Yes, the campus. campus. Not the bubble. Um, and you're seeing a lot of stories come out of there. Is there anything, I guess, you've experienced that maybe was a bit unexpected? Um, how has that process been the last couple of weeks covering the team from the campus? For me, it was exciting because we're talking about basketball again. And the other day, Giannis, on a conference call, he said, hey, it was, practice was great today. Basketball brings players joy. And I couldn't help but think, like, basketball brings a lot of us joy. And yeah, you could, you know, talk about the distraction that it may be, but it also is like a refuge. And I'm not gonna lie, like I needed a refuge and I'm grateful and blessed that my job is my refuge, right? And, and getting back into the swing of things and talking basketball. So it's been really fun. It's different because I'm in Milwaukee, obviously the team's in Florida. So covering everything remote is different for me. This entire process, I've been like side by side and witnessing the journey with my own eyes. And so now I'm witnessing the journey secondhand and getting information rather than just seeing it for myself. So that's an adjustment. It's gonna be an adjustment with how we do the broadcast, but I think we're still gonna give people an awesome production and watching the games in just a different way, but still the same talent and the same 
uh, energy that we always have. Um, but it's been cool just to see how the guys have adapted to such a changing atmosphere down there. Yeah, well, I'm, I'll be excited to, to hear your voice or however that's going to work, if you're going to have a camera in your house or how, <laughs> how, how that'll work. But I'm, I'm excited to, to see your work nonetheless. Um, okay, so I've got some new segments. Uh, the first one is it's a vibe. That's the name of the segment. It's okay. a vibe. <laughs> so I want to know, is there a cultural, a lifestyle, or like maybe a fashion trend that you're really into right now? I say that because whenever I see something cool, I'm like, oh, it's a vibe. I hear you. I, this might be a little weird. The first thing I'm going to go with is, I don't know if you all have seen it, but there's this new Twitter account, NBA Bubble Life. That whole account is a vibe. It's like a reality show on your timeline. And it gives you all the content of what the guys are doing in the bubble. And I watch it like it's a TV show. <laughs> and then, okay, this is another social media trend. I don't know if you would say it's a vibe, but all these cakes, I enjoy watching. <laughs> I'm nuts. I, well, I have developed a sweet tooth during this hiatus. Like that has been my thing. So like I get this weird satisfaction of watching all these objects as they are cakes. So. And it's like they're cutting the chicken. It's just too weird. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Lastly, though, on a more serious note, a trend that has been happening lately, which there's like a, a positive and negative to it, right? It shouldn't be a trend. It should be something that's happening all the time. But this mainstream idea that supporting Black businesses is now the cool thing to do. I appreciate it because it's bringing in audiences that didn't, weren't exposed to these businesses before. At the end of the day, I think everybody should support, you know, all businesses and see black businesses as mainstream businesses, right? And not this like, oh, I'm high and mighty because I'm supporting black businesses, right? No, you're just supporting businesses that you like that happen to be black. But uh, I love that it's a trend and let's make it something that's not just a trend, but a forever thing. What has been your favorite headline from like the last week? Okay. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, I, I laughed a little bit when the first person that broke the bubble rules was <laughs> the person that went to get takeout. And it, it's funny because it, it, there's a whole story, but his mom said, hey, like the only reason you should be leaving is to get my cooking and I'm not there. So I did like that headline. <laughs> um, because we've all been there like in a hotel where we wanna, you know, get some food that's not on the premises, so. Lastly, uh, the show is called Major Key. So what is a major key that you would give to viewers? I can give my major key in quarantine. I bought a bike <laughs> and it has changed my life. Really? Okay. Yes. I bought a used bike and I've just been like exploring the city. And so I guess my major key for this time is just to find something that makes you happy. Find your little oasis. And mine has been this bike. Zora is so awesome. I'm so glad she got to be with us. I'm so glad that you got to learn a little bit more about her sports journey. Now on to what I've been listening to. Quarantine is one of those times where we've been learning, growing, listening, reading, doing all kinds of things. So I'm gonna keep y'all updated on what I'm learning. This week, I've been listening to the podcast 1619. The 1619 Project is a New York Times Magazine publication by Nicole Hannah-Jones, where she explores the legacy of slavery and what that really means for us today in 2020. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all again what's happening in Georgia. Like, I, I just really want a shirt that says, wear the effing mask. And I don't even cuss, but that's where I am. All right, I wanna thank my guest, Zora Stevenson, for joining me today. Thank you for watching Major Keys. I'll see you here next time. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, and make sure you like, comment, subscribe. The faster I get subscribers, the faster I can change my name from Hornet B-Ball Girl 33, which was made circa 2005. So help us this out. Like, comment, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Thanks. Keys, keys, keys. I got the keys, keys, keys.